Alright, what's your plan on doing today? Drop fade. Drop fade all the time. So you wanna um we're gonna show the seeds though, right? I know we're not gonna show the seeds. Alright. So to kick this video off, I go in using my gold brush and I'm just brushing the hair with the grain. I want to get the hair completely laid down to that one desired length. My next step, I go in with my one and a half blade and I just want to go with the grain. I want to make sure that I get all of this hair down to the desired length all just because the hair not super long and it's my first time cutting it. So it's just more of just getting the hair down to a desired length and getting everything as smooth as possible using the corner of the blade and making sure I'm not digging into the hair because you don't want to dig into the area where the dreads is basically attached. That's why I'm feeling for it. I'm getting the feel for it. I'm trying to make sure that the hair is not super grippable because I don't want to cut none of the new growth to the dreads. Then I go in and use my gold babeless FX trimmers and I'm just basically dropping my line super low because I'm doing a drop fade. Then I blow the panel completely out. My next step is to go completely open with my Anders Masters and give myself about a half of an inch of a guideline. Then I'm going to go in with my Babyliss FX's and I want to blow this panel out starting completely open and I'm going to keep dropping my lever closer and closer until I got this line blended all the way out. So I start all the way open then I drop it to halfway here and you guys will see me completely close it. Keeping everything consistent. I got that ear folded down just so I'm able to hit the angles of my fade. And I'm just trying to keep everything consistent as possible and treat this like a regular haircut. Because it is a regular haircut to an extent. It's just different. Like, it's super different. When he first walked in the shop, I was trying to, like, really determine what this was. But after cutting it, like, I cut it, like, two or three times since this video. And it was just like, oh, okay, you just treat it like a regular haircut. Now that that's blew out, I go in with my .5 guard, and I'm going in completely closed just so I can really see the damage that I can do. I want to see how low it is just because I don't normally use the .5 guard on my Babeless. I just really want to see what I can do with it. So now that I see that, it's not really knocking too much hair off, but at the same time, I don't want to go too high with it. I'm just staying super low with it. And at times, just staying super low is super important just so when you remove your guard, you could go completely open and stay super formatted without pushing your guidelines too high. That is super vital to my process in terms of fading. Then I attach my guard again and I go halfway close right here. And then with halfway close, I just want to nudge at this line and keep hitting at this line just so I can keep the gradient C up. I don't want to go too high because he do get waves and I don't want to be trying to fade at a wave because sometimes waves can appear to be guidelines even though they're not. If they look like ripples and it's just really where the hair curls and you don't want to really dig too much into a wave because just sometimes you're going to get the darker spot just because it's a wave. Then I go in with my 1 8 guard right here and that's completely closed on my Andis Masters which is my number one guard and I'm just basically hitting at this line without getting too high into the waves. As 
you guys can see I'm brushing one, fading one, keeping everything consistent and not overplaying my part. It's super, super, super essential to my process of barbering. I don't never overplay my part on anything that I do throughout the haircut because I'm trying to alleviate stress. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. And then I'm in with a one and a half right here and I'm just cleaning up because I know I'm in that wave area. So you definitely you want to go with a bigger guard and flick at it opposed to digging to it. Back down to my 116th guard, cleaning up some of the dark spots at the bottom of the waves, and then this side is pretty much done. Then I'm gonna go on this side, repeat some of the same steps. I'm cutting with that one and a half guard, getting everything down to that one desired length, and I'm watching out for where the dreads and the new growth is connected. Because if I don't, I will yank some of that hair, and that's not what you wanna do. You don't wanna yank none of that hair where the dreads is. So I'm gonna lift the dreads up and push them away from me, but also look at the hair that I'm cutting and bring it and pull it down towards me. So I'm just keeping everything consistent, and like I said, treating it like a regular drop fade. I got enough room to do a regular drop drop fade it's just more of a different haircut and when you see haircuts like this some people won't be happy at all some people go not like this in the comment section but that's not our problem like me and the client discussed this already like you get your people that's gonna hate on certain things the people that's just not gonna like certain things but that's not our problem at the end of the day as a barber it's not my problem to try to sway somebody from an idea that they already locked into like i never seen nobody with dreads and waves at the same time so i mean this is what he want to do this is his style and hey the only thing i can do is accommodate it with what i bring to the table in barber and let's do this drop fade and give him a crazy lineup so what i did was i went in the back i did my trimmer i kept bringing that line all the way across i went completely open now i'm on my 116th guard and i'm trying to blend out this open and 116th guard right now brush of one fade one staying super consistent just repeating a lot of the same steps that i showed you on one side moving the dreads out the way you gotta be able to see it's just super essential to my process i'm going completely open right here half of an inch and blowing this panel out right here as well i could have did it with my babyless like the other side but i sometimes i just switch my clippers up because i be bored using the same clipper all day so it's not one of them things where it's like why did he use the babyless here it's just really you know my choice if i want to use them or if i don't just remaining consistent, keeping everything up to par with me, and just having fun at what I'm doing and staying focused and locked in. It's always been essential to my process. Again, I tell y'all all the time, I'm always worried about me and my client. I'm not worried about third parties or whatever's going on in the shop. I'm completely locked in. I'm completely focused, especially when I'm shooting a video. I gotta be, I gotta be focused just so I can make sure that I'm getting the right clips for you guys. I gotta make sure everything is in frame. And then my camera is completely focused that's 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 just what i'm worried about when i'm in a shop i'm truly 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 a creator and that's just something that i've been you know working on getting myself in the groove and not slowing down and as you guys can see this side is pretty much blended out and i'm just doing detail work at the bottom of the waves Then I'm re-going over the top of the lineup with my one and a half guard just to ensure that everything is completely laid and completely in order. I'll go in behind it with M Spritz. A lot of people ask me what spritz I use. This spritz is only sold in Chicago from my vendor. It's called M Spritz and then I go in with my Babyless blow dry and I want to blow dry this hair and bring everything forward. I want to pull everything forward with this one. This is just super different of a haircut, man. I never did a haircut like this at all. So I'm just adjusting to what I got going on. So I start on my left side, and then I'm going to break my weight all the way into the middle. But I kind of want to play it super, super safe, all because the corner area is super small. So I got to use half of my blade on either the top or, or the bottom. I can't use my whole blade unless I'm on the front of the lineup. And as you guys can see, I get that 90 degree first. And then boom, I just keep moving and keep moving and taking my time. And I got this in regular speed just so I can show you. A lot of guys will mess this lining up all because you can see the right side, how it's like shifted backwards. You don't want to overly play your part. I'm going to show you how to get a real clean, straight lineup just by taking your time and using a straight blade. Like a lot of people be forgetting when it comes to a lineup, 
Lineups are not really straight Cause you can't put a straight thing on a round object It's impossible But you could create illusion throughout the hairline To make you feel like you are seeing a super straight line As you guys can see exactly where I'm going with this Staying on the furthest hair possible And not overly playing my game And as you guys can see I'm just keeping everything superly, superly consistent And just barely tapping Cause I don't wanna overplay my part Like overplaying your part Sometimes or well, a lot of times to me with beginner barbers is exactly why they not getting the haircut results that they want because they overplaying their part. You take your time with everything. You just make sure that all your lines are solidified. And as you can see, I'm just tapping and going and keeping everything superly, superly consistent. And that's one thing that I enjoyed about putting this thing in regular speed is so you guys can see me line up at regular speed. I didn't want to overly do anything. And I noticed that that right side is a tad bit higher, so watch where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start in the middle, and that's gonna be my center point, and this is gonna balance me truly out. Cause now that I got most of my hard points in and hard lines in, I can literally just take it from the middle and move it to the left side, all because I know that the right side is shifted back. The more that I take my time with this, the more that I center myself every time, I'm gonna always go behind that and then reflect that same picture on the left side and keep everything consistent. This lineup is super tricky, and I promise you, a lot of beginning barbers will fold with this boy lineup. You gotta take your time, man. You gotta make sure that you're hitting the right things, and just stay consistent. As you guys can see, I'm hitting every bit of this lineup. I'm using every bit of my blade, and then in the corners, I'm only using partial parts of my blades, just so I can make sure that I keep everything consistent. And I wanna keep turning his head my way, make sure that everything is completely centered. And then just keep hitting these little pieces that's hanging over that's making my lineup look wobbly. And it's slowly but surely coming together, man. Like, you really got a person with dreads and waves in a chair. This is super crazy, so I'm just glad that I was able to capture this for YouTube. My next step is to go in with my boy Sean Cuts Hair Color Enhancement Card, assisted with the Beam Team Coolest Compressor and my color no drip. A lot of people get in the comment section, feel like the color comes off in the shower, it doesn't. No drip is completely waterproof. And man, you just gotta try it out. But everybody out there who wanna get Sean Enhancement uh, Card, you just go to Sean Cuts Hair page on IG, and then he got his link to his store in his bio you click the link to the store in the bio and you go buy you a color enhancement card it keeps you 100 percent grounded and keeps you in inside of your realm and not able to mess up color so as you guys can see i'm just floating over the waves and treating it like a regular haircut this is what i mean by when i said it was a regular haircut even to people in the comment section who're gonna feel like it's not if this was a regular drop fade and he didn't have his dreads up top i would have did the same thing so i go in using my barber magic pencil and i don't want to overly play my part at all i want to create super thin clean lines because i want it to look super clean super precise i need the lines to look concealed i needed to make that line and pop a little a little bit more that's what it's about with me when you come into my channel i'm showing you how to shape shift i'm showing you how to take everything to the next level first i lined them up regularly and it looks good then i added color and it looked even better and now i put the concealer on it and it's gonna look even way better and then right after this i'm gonna go behind it and clean it up with my razor and just put it in this all-time high super clean form Format. And that's what I do on my channel. I'll show you how to break that level. I'll show you how to take everything that you're doing and take it to another level. That's been super important throughout the whole process. As long as I'm teaching y'all growing and I'm trying to make this thing as clean and as easy as possible. So I stretch that skin angle that raises at a 45 degree angle and bring everything back. And as you guys can see, cleanliness, the backstroke cleanliness treating the lineup like common denominators whatever i do to one side i do to the other side and in reference of a line and whatever i do to one side i do to this side so as you guys can see it's super super clean as i told you i can't use the whole blade of everything because that corner is super tight so that's just what i'm mixed in as you guys he's checking it out that boy already know he gassed up he know what's up so i just go behind this and just clean up the little mustache area and i just want to make sure that everything is superly clean right here Shout out to Jerm Booming, cause this be hard, dawg. This be hard, and that boy is beaming. I ain't gonna lie, that line is super straight. That line is super, super straight. So 
So in an imperfect world, we do get these clients that come in with exotic hairstyles. But as barbers, it's up to us to change that outcome. And on my channel, I only give it up one way. So let's lock in. Hashtag TBT in that comment section. Hashtag Glacier Gang. Hashtag 2020 year to shapeshifters. All of that. Yeah, I need all of that. If you was able to sit through the 16 minute video, please like, share, subscribe, comment. Yeah, hit that notification button. All of that. Until next time, and may God bless. Check him out, man. That boy know that this is pressure. Look how he looking in that camera. He can see it already. That boy gassed up, man. Let's get it. Y'all know what time it is.